Okay, this is a continuing lesson that culminates with the 10-2 lesson master. We're still in chapter 10, lesson two, AX plus B equals CX plus D. This is where we're working with variables on both sides of the equation. Um, we did two pizzazz dittos leading up to this that used all integer work. The lesson master is going to have a little more juicy content for you to look at. So I want to talk about one more strategy. It's not going to be required, but it certainly is a nice way to attack a problem. So let's look at something that has some rational numbers. Wow. A little bit disgusting here. Okay. Um, let's, uh, I, uh, let's pretend that I hate decimals more than anything. The first thing I'm going to do when I look at this is I really want to get rid of these parentheses first. So I'm going to use the distributive property. I am going to add the opposite here. And I'm going to distribute that negative factor, giving me 2x plus negative 5x plus negative 20. And I'm just going to bring all of this down. I I guess I can combine these two like terms. That's not terrible. 5 and 5 tenths x plus 4 and 5 tenths. Now, if I hate decimals more than anything, and I don't really want to be dealing... Oops, wait, I can combine one more like term over here. 5 and 5 tenths x plus 4 and 5 tenths equals negative 3x plus negative um, let's say I don't want to have to deal with a positive and negative and the halves and everything. So I am going to employ a new strategy that I have not taught you before, and it does involve the distributive property. I'm going to take this entire equation, and I'm going to multiply by a factor. Now, I could multiply by one-third, by negative eight, by 75, but let's be strategic. I want to eliminate my decimals. So if I move them over one to the right with mathematics then I've eliminated them, so I'm gonna multiply this whole thing by 10. Now, everybody inside these parentheses are in the studio audience here, so Oprah is gonna give out this factor of 10 to this term and this term and this term and this term. We've really never worked across the equal sign like this before. So five and a half times 10, I'm gonna get 55x plus 45 equals 10 times negative three, negative 30x plus 10 times negative 20 is negative 200. Well, now I can go through my equation solving process. Uh, let's see here, I'm gonna add 30x. Oh, but subtracting the negatives, I don't know if I wanna do that. I guess I can. Uh, let's add 30 and add 30. Now that might not have been your choice. You might wanna work with the constants first. Remember, yesterday, we talked about, um, you do it any way you want to. You can start with any term. So that term goes to zero. Now I get 25, wait a second, not 25, I'm not subtracting. 85x plus 45 equals negative 200. Think about which term you want to deal with next. You want to deal with the 85x, the 45, or the negative 200. We do not want to deal with this coefficient yet because the x term is not isolated. So we're going to subtract 45 and subtract 45. This is a real error alert here for most students because you're subtracting a positive from a negative. You definitely want to add the opposite here. You're going to end up with 85x on the left-hand side plus negative, negative 245. All right, I'm dividing by that coefficient. Oh my, that's a little bit ugly. Um, I know it's going to be negative. <laughs> Who picked these numbers? 245 divided by 85. Um, 3 is going to be too high because 3 times 80 is 24. So it's probably going to be 2, 10, 16, 17, 5, 75. So I have two holes and 75, 80, 
fifths, which I can simplify by dividing each one by five. Negative two, 75 divided by five. 15, 85 divided by five. Some of you guys are gonna be able to do this mentally, um, but I'm a little too old for that. So the answer here is negative two and 15 seventeenths. Now, did I have to do this? No, if I had taken three and two tenths X plus, well, let's jump down to where we simplified it. 5 and 5 tenths x plus 45 equals negative 3x plus negative 20. And I had worked with it with the decimals. I should still get the same answer. So let's say I added 3x to both sides. I would end up with 8 and 5 tenths x plus 40, 4 and 5 tenths equals negative 20. I'd be subtracting 4 and 5 tenths. 8 and 5 tenths x equals, uh, at the opposite, negative 24 and 5 tenths divided by 8 and 5 tenths divided by 8 and 5 tenths. 24 and 5 tenths divided by 8 and 5 tenths. It's going to be negative. I'm gonna multiply both of these by 10. And again, I'm gonna get 245 divided by 85. I'm still gonna end up with the same answer. You can plug it into your calculator. It will prove it's still two and 15 seventeenths. Because what I did was I multiplied it by a factor of 10. Uh, I did that to eliminate the decimals because I'm not a huge fan of the decimals. Let me do another example with fractions, because I know there are those of you out there who would avoid a fraction at all costs. 3 eighths y plus 1 half equals negative 2 thirds y minus 5 twelfths. Now, I could solve this. I could find that common denominator. I could work with it. I could, you know, subtract and multiply by the reciprocal and all that good stuff. But I want to pick a number that's going to cause all of these to become integers. So you gotta kinda of think about a common denominator here. If I picked 10, that wouldn't work. So the number I'm actually gonna pick here is 24. Because I know that when I multiply all of these by a whole number of 24, I'm gonna end up with whole numbers. And that's kind of understanding how fractions work. So, 24 times 3 eighths. I think I'm going to need a calculator today to show a little bit of these in between steps. 24 times 3 is 72 eighths y plus 24 halves equals negative 48 thirds y minus 24 times 5 is 120 twelfths. Now, if you know numbers like I know numbers, this is 9y plus 12 equals negative 16y minus 10. It went from really kind of disgusting fractions down to these beautiful integers where I can add 16y to both sides and subtract 12. and get 25y equals plus negative, negative 22, dividing by the coefficient, y equals negative 22 fifths, 20 fifths. Um, you could absolutely write that as a decimal. Uh, I think it's gonna be 88 hundredths. Yeah, I, but you don't have to. Same answer that we would have gotten up here, well, I don't have to use all those crazy fractions to do it. Um, last example, when you go over here to the lesson master, you're gonna see that there's a lot of questions that have some decimals. You can multiply by 10 if you want. Let's look at this one. This is not um, a pre-algebra standard for us. This is kind of a bonus. You're gonna learn about this next year but you can kind of understand the principle of how to solve this. Remember that the fraction bar puts invisible parentheses around the numerator and invisible parentheses around the denominator. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this entire thing by six, a factor of six. So really, I'm saying six, six holes, numerator times numerator, times the quantity p plus three, which becomes six times the quantity p plus three. And the denominator remains the same, equals six times the quantity p minus four divided by three. Now you could look at that now as six halves times p plus three quantity pieces. So all I did was kind of move this out. If I kind of move this across, I'd still have this fraction equals six thirds times the quantity p plus four, which becomes three times the quantity p plus three equals two times the quantity p plus four. You distribute three p plus nine equals two p plus eight, and you solve from there. You don't have to do anything that looks like that. So when you see number 10, it's not required. You can do it as a challenge. We're already doing things that are difficult enough. On the back of this worksheet, you're gonna see those beautiful word problems that we love so much. You wanna write an equation to fit the situation. Most of them are gonna look like this. You're gonna have AX plus B equals CX plus D. Um, I'll let you struggle through that. I'll have an answer key for you. Feel free to reach out if you get stuck on something, but you really have to think about it. Ow, all right, you twisted my arm, I'll do one. Um, let's do the soccer clubs. On January 1st, the soccer club had $75, but it anticipates a budget loss of $5 per month. Well, that's unfortunate. Per month, that's gonna be important. On the same day, the volleyball club had $12, but anticipates a budget profit of $4 per month. If these predictions hold true, after how many months will the two clubs have the same amount? So to figure out how much money soccer club has, they start with $75, but each week they're losing, or each month, they're losing this much money. So month one, they have $70. Month two, they have $65. Month three, so I'm multiplying and then subtracting. We wanna know when they have the same amount of money. So the volleyball club has $12, but is making $4 per month. So in month one, they'd make, they'd have $16 because they made $4. In month two, they'd make $8, so that would give them a total of $20. So the idea here is when are they going to be equal? AX plus B, uh, CX plus D. So I'm going to add the opposite here because terms are separated by addition. I am going to add 5M and add 5M. 75 equals 12 plus 9M, subtracting 12. Why did I do that? I wanted to have positive numbers. If I did it the other way, I'd have two negatives. I'd end up with the same answer. 9m, divide by that coefficient. So the equation I wrote was 75 minus 5m equals 12 plus 4m. I solved it after seven months. So if you substitute that back in here, you end up getting 75 minus 5 times 7 equals 12 plus 4 times 7. That's month 7. 75 minus 35 should equal 12 plus 28. This is gonna be $40 and this will be $40. So at month seven, they will both have $40. That's what that proves. We'll talk more about what all that means mathematically later.